It's February and love is in the air, but not if you're in a relationship with the wrong sales platform. Don't worry, Sales Hub from HubSpot is here to help. It's an all-on-one platform that helps teams prospect smarter, boost revenue, and scale better. Plus, it's easy to learn and free to start. What's not to love about all that? It's time to break up with your old sales platform. With Sales Hub, closing deals is no big deal. Head to HubSpot.com slash sales right now. Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, February 8th. I'm John Wigel here with Juliet Bennett-Ryla, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. If you've been to a McDonald's or a Taco Bell recently and were surprised at the unusually high prices, you're not the only one. Fast food is kind of expensive nowadays, and these changes are starting to feel the sting as consumers begin to take notice and turn to other options. Will we see an actual dollar menu again anytime soon, or is fast food going down fast? We'll chat about that in a bit, but first let's give you the hits and headlines today across business and tech. Starting us off today, Warner Brothers, Discovery, Disney, ESPN, and Fox are launching a sports streaming platform which will be owned by a newly formed, still unnamed company. Each network will own one third of the new service and share board representation. Hell of a sports monopoly. Next, in more layoff news this year, a NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory is actually laying off 530 employees and about 40 contractors after Congress failed to pass a 2024 budget. If I could just note something here, if you don't know the history of the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Jack Parsons, its founder, I'm going to go request that you Wikipedia Jack Parsons (laughs) right now because he was one wild dude. (laughs) That's something I'm going to have to do then. Oh, yeah. And if you if you read about it, then find me on on X or where wherever you find me and tell me what you learned. (laughs) Very exciting. And next up, The Void, the immersive VR experience that put customers inside Star Wars and the Avengers before shutting down amid the pandemic, has been posting new videos indicating a possible return under Hyper Reality Partners, which acquired it in 2021. Juliet, you've been to The Void, yes? Yes, several times. It was very cool. I haven't gotten my hands on an Apple Vision Pro yet, but I've done a lot of VR stuff in the past. And the Void is probably one of the coolest things that I've done in the world of VR. It was in a mall when it when it was around and you would go there and they'd they'd fix you up, not with just the headset, but you had haptic feedback and sensors all over your body. So then you would go inside what was essentially like a big black box and then you'd put the headset on and boom, now you're in Star Wars or boom, now you're in Ghostbusters. It was so cool. And you would you would. You would walk around and touch things like you could pick up a blaster like Han Solo or an object and they looked, I mean, in real life, they were just big pieces of plastic, but like they looked like what you thought they were supposed to look like. And you could smell stuff like when you ghost busted, if that's the correct verb, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, it smelled like marshmallows. Star Wars, you went to like this lava planet and it got hotter the closer you got to the surface. It was so cool. I loved it. And then, of course, the pandemic happened. So I would love to see them make a comeback because you really just can't. I I mean, I know like VR at home is pretty cool and I've gotten into a lot of VR apps, but you really can't get that experience in your house unless you live with like a really cool roommate that is going to do all that stuff for you. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Blow a fan in your face. (laughs) Stuff like that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I I love this concept. I think it's fascinating. The way you described it too, I had no idea it had all those extra features about like the smell. It makes me think of like like 4D theaters back in like the early 2000s at Universal and stuff like that. I I don't love VR. I just, I haven't loved it yet. I've played a lot of VR games Uh before and it just never did the trick for me. But maybe having actual objects to pick up will help because I just always feel weird about seeing my floating disembodied hands trying to pick up a rock (laughs) or something. So so maybe this is actually helping. Yeah, in this one I think if I'm remembering the plot correctly, you you're the you're the rebels, but you're in disguise as stormtroopers. So when you reached out your hand looked like a you had stormtrooper armor on it. So it was a little more realistic than like I'm a legless weirdo in my hands a cartoon. Yeah, exactly. And my hands are just out here and I have to run from everybody because I'm playing Resident Evil. Don't right. play that. It's terrifying. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> All right, over to the beverage industry. Coca-Cola is making a rare new addition to its permanent product lineup with a spiced drink flavor in the U.S. and Canada. 
And finally, speaking of new products, Pizza Hut launched a new campaign called Goodbye Pies, which lets you send a free delivery to your ex between now and Valentine's Day. Fantastic idea. What could possibly go wrong? I love it. You know what? After all the stuff our respective exes have put us through, the least they can do is send us free pizzas. So, Right. With our favorite toppings. No shenanigans. A kind gesture. Exactly. You remember my favorite toppings. Send them on over, X. Uh Exactly. Today's big story tackles the surprisingly expensive fast food industry. In this economy, we're seeing prices at places like McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut reach all-time highs. Juliet, have you seen and experienced this yourself, or am I just going crazy? Inspired by this story, I I decided to see what it would cost if I were to order a hash brown, a single hash brown from McDonald's on DoorDash. (laughs) And uh, I live in the Los Angeles area. So I was I I went to see I was like, how much is one hash brown? And it was three dollars and ten cents. So people are correct. Hash browns are now three dollars. Then I went to Amazon Fresh and a five pound bag of potatoes will cost me about 350. So for 50 cents more, and obviously putting in the labor of making hash browns, I could have so many more and possibly better hash browns. So yes, I have experienced this myself today. Wow, that is terrible. I have never tried to buy a single hash brown, but especially through a delivery app like DoorDash, I, I have to imagine that there are fees even <laughs> on top of that $3. I would assume, so yeah. So if you really want that emergency and... hash brown, you got to work for it. Right, right. So when did this all start happening and what are the effects of this kind of inflation on the companies and also consumers like us? Well, I think it's all part of a, what we begrudgingly say in this economy. Yeah, we're in a weird economy. Everything is expensive. Food costs are rising. Labor costs are rising. Everything is rising. Inflation, blah, blah, blah. But I think people are, are sick of it. And that's what's bearing out in these reports. So we learned that Yum Brands, that's the parent company for Taco Bell, KFC, Pizza Hut, they reported flagging sales growth in Q4. Sales at Taco Bell restaurants open at least one year or more grew 3%, which it sounds not bad, but compared to Q4 in 2022, where sales grew 11%, you're seeing a lot of drop off there. Pizza Hut sales dropped 4% in Q4. KFC sales were about the same. McDonald's in the U.S. sales grew 4.3%, which again, doesn't sound bad until you consider that in Q3, they grew 8.1%. That's probably back when everyone was making horror movies with Grimace shakes and they had a lot going on then. But now everybody's like, why aren't people buying fast food? Fast food is like, it's like a staple of our culture, really. I mean, how, I don't I don't drive anymore, but when you could go through the drive through like that was like, oh, I got to get something on the way home. It was so convenient. And the question is, okay, so what happened? Why aren't people doing this anymore? And it is simply a matter of cost. The CEO of McDonald's agreed that customers initially, back in 2023, price hikes shot food up about 10% or as much as 10%. People were still going. People were still getting their hash browns. But now it's cheaper to eat at home. And that is what people are doing. And unsurprisingly, it is the cohort of customers who are making 45 grand a year or less who are falling off the fastest. I suppose if you make a lot of money, you'll pay $3 for a hash brown. But the rest of us, uh, we're going to make our own hash browns. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or get that from Trader Joe's. Dang, big tech. Big tech and their hash browns. <laughs> yes. This is very interesting and also kind of echoes something that we talked about previously, you and I, about the restaurant industry also and how restaurants are getting increasingly expensive and dessert places are getting really expensive. And it just seems like everything in this economy is yelling at us to eat at home rather than go out anymore. And it seems like fast food is not separate from all that. Yeah, and that's really disappointing because, you know, I'm I'm sure all of us have maybe in our teenage or college years at least experienced the joy of the Taco Bell and or McDonald's dollar menu or whatever they're they're calling it. <laughs> and now it's like, you know, if you can't if you can't even get there was one place, it was in Connecticut, a Big Mac meal, which was, you know, Big Mac fries and a soda was eighteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's the big problem because when I've gone to McDonald's in the past few years, it's never been because, oh, that's that's cheaper. I'll get uh-huh. McDonald's. No, it's because I crave McDonald's and don't mind now spending about like 20 bucks if I'm right. like having McDonald's once once in a while. And and that's, I think, the problem too, because right. $18, you can get a thing at like, you can go to Cava, you can go to Dig, you can get all the nice stuff at those places for $18. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So it just seems like an 
an unhealthy option that is surprisingly inflated. Right. And we've talked about this before, even with movie theaters. We have streaming now. We can watch anything we want in the comfort of our own homes, with our cats, in our pajamas, with whatever food we want. So movie theaters, you know, it's really got to be a draw to the movie theater. But I went to see a movie. I, I know I talked about it on this podcast. I went to see a movie around Christmas time and I got a small popcorn and a small soda and it was $17. And it's like, <laughs> why? I can put as much real butter as I want on some Orville Redenbacher for like a couple bucks and my cat can come like why yeah. <laughs> going out's getting pricey I and what are they gonna do about it I guess like what are the especially in the fast food industry what are they gonna do like are we gonna see McDonald's give me a dollar menu again like that would be nice the indication is that there are gonna be some price cuts we don't know what yet and possibly a return to the dollar menu Taco Bell already has some new deals the Washington Post bless them tried them all found it amounted to four pounds of food for about twenty one dollars including a beefy a, a big beefy burrito for two seventy nine which that's not horrible that is not bad not bad. But yeah, I just, you know, more broadly, it just seems like this is what we are seeing everywhere in every sector. Everything is expensive. And maybe it will inspire us to learn how to make our own hash browns and crunch wraps supremes. Great. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. I've been listening to an awesome podcast recently called Marketing Made Simple. It's hosted by Dr. J.J. Peterson, and it's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, which is the audio destination for business professionals. Marketing Made Simple brings you practical tips to make your marketing easy and more importantly, make it actually work. I was listening to an episode recently that really stuck with me, and it was called How Real Should You Be at Work? In that episode, Dr. J.J. Peterson and his co-host April Sunshine Hawkins talked with Ashley Menzies Babatunde, who is the creator and host of her own podcast called No Straight Path and it explores the human stories behind success. But on their podcast, Ashley dove into the importance of embracing humanity in the workplace and acknowledging that setbacks and emotional challenges are a natural part of everybody's daily life. So I found that really, really impactful. You can listen to Marketing Made Simple wherever you get your podcasts.